Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. So here I am with another book haul. So the thrift shops have been delivering lately and there's one specific one where I live um, in the big city, Calgary, that uh, there's not a single time that I've gone in there that I haven't found a whole stack of books. So I'm gonna go through this huge vintage book haul with you guys. Uh, so if you're into that, I am gonna go through the horror first and the other vintage ones. So if you're only here to see the horror, of course, you can watch the beginning of the video. And then if you would like to carry on through to the end, I will have some uh, other vintage books like uh, series like Sweet Valley and stuff like that. So I'm going to be getting into that and I also got some movies and shows lately so I wanted to share those as well. I have started to try to build up my DVD collection a little bit again. Um, streaming services are just pissing me off so uh, Matthew and I have been out searching for movies to add to our collection so I've got some really good sounding ones. So we're going to get into the movies and all the books and the horror and uh, it's gonna be a good time. So this is gonna be a very relaxed laid-back book haul. So grab yourself a hot drink, a tea, coffee, juice, whatever and uh, we're gonna get into this. Before I share the books with you though I did want to share this so I got a really really cute holiday card. Um, I am taking part in a couple of card exchanges that uh, people that I found on Instagram that were doing some card exchanges and I'm also a member of the Slime and Slashers uh, Patreon so we're doing a card exchange there too and it's just been so great to receive cards in the mail. Um, I love getting postcards and notes and all of that sort of thing. So this one is all the way from Iowa. I think is IA. Is that Iowa? <laughs> I'm guessing here. I'm Canadian so I'm not really sure. Um, it says, Elizabeth, wishing you and yours a most joyous holiday season. Happy holidays from Ames, Iowa, USA, from Sheena, Tallulah, and Lily. And look at this. This is just adorable. Look at that. I love that. And she included a little sticker. So cute. So thank you so much, Shauna, if you're watching. Um, that definitely made my day when I opened up the mail the other day. So uh, if anybody else is into doing card exchanges, uh, my email is down below and of course you can hit me up on Instagram as well. I am slowly getting through doing all of my winter solstice cards. They'll be going out in the mail soon. So uh, yeah, if you wanted to receive a card or a note or a postcard or something, um, you can hit me up like I said on my Instagram or my email is down below as well. So enough with the holiday business, let's get into the book haul. And I was so excited when I found this one in um, the thrift shop. So um, I used to have actually quite a few Anne Rice hardcovers and just got rid of them over the years. A lot of them though were paperbacks as well. Uh, and this one is Tall Toast. So this is part of the Mayfair Witches series. And this was one of my favorites when I was growing up. I did read the entire Mayfair, Mayfair series when I was a teenager. But this one, for some reason, really sticks out in my mind. I'm not sure why, but I read it over and over when I was younger. Um, I think I was about 14 or 15 when I read it the first time. And uh, was so happy to find this hardcover edition at the thrift shop. It wasn't too cheap, though. I mean, $7.50 for something at a thrift shop is not the best price. Oh, it just says $19.94. It doesn't give an edition. So it just says $19.94. Um, but I was really, really excited to find this one. So I do want to uh, start my Anne Rice hardcover collection. I actually found a couple today that I had to leave behind on the shelf because it was over my book budget. Um, but this one I love. Just the gothic sort of feels on the front cover here. So I was so happy to find this one because it's very, very nostalgic for me. Can't remember a thing about it. I can't remember anything really about the Mayfair Witches series. Uh, it is something that I do want to reread. So this one is the first in the Anne Rice hardcover recollection, I guess, process uh, for this collection. And uh, hoping to add more Anne Rice as we go along here. And, uh, you know, I get out into the thrift shops and try to find all of her hardcover copies. 
and of course it wouldn't be one of my book hauls without a Buffy book. I'm so excited I found this one out of the Brown series. This is one of the ones that I'm still missing out of there, but my Brown series is almost complete. So this one is Here Be Monsters, Family Ties That Bind, and this is in fantastic condition. And uh, I find a lot of my Buffy books um, from my friend Marissa at Spooky Sellables. She has an Etsy shop and she was one of the first shops that I found on Etsy that I started to um, add to my collection from. Her stuff is always in fantastic condition. It gets here super quickly. She's super responsive and uh, we would consider each other spooky friends at this point. So uh, I am now an ambassador for her shop on Etsy. So I'll leave my code down below. It is Sagewood15 if you want 15% off of your order from Marissa's shop. So she doesn't only do books, she also does like VHS and CDs and she has spooky crafts and all kinds of things on there. So make sure you go check out Spooky Sellables, sellables on Etsy and on Instagram if you're not following her already. And I was so excited to find one out of the Ghost House series. You guys know that this is one of my favorite book series. So uh, there's so many books in this, in, in this series. This is number 45. So as you can see, this one has to do with urban legends and it says Strange Stories Behind Modern Myths by A.S. Mott, who is one of the, uh, th that author has a couple in this series, the Ghost House series, and I was super, super excited to find this at a really good price and it's in such good condition. So it was unfortunate because there was a whole bunch, like somebody got rid of all of their ghosty books and there was this one, there was a couple of others from the Ghost House series that I already have in my collection, so I left those behind. Um, and there were some other ones, there was like some from the States, there was Irish ghost legends, there was London ghost legends, but a lot of them had water damage and it was so sad. Even Matt was like, oh, he was like, that would have been such a good find. But I had to leave those behind, but I was so, so happy that this one was in good condition because this is one that I've been looking for for a little while. And next up with the ghosty books is Ghost Stories of Alberta. Alberta is where I live, so super, super excited to find this one. And this one is by Barbara Smith, who is also another author. She has her own uh, ghosty collection, but she's also part of the Ghost House series as well. And this was one that I was specifically looking for for my collection. And uh, I'm also working on another spooky project that I should be announcing pretty soon. Uh, it'll be starting in 2024. So um, I've been doing lots of research for that. So these kinds of books have come in handy for me doing that other project. Uh, I have lots of spooky projects that I'm trying to get off the ground right now and it, it's 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 tough because I do work full time as well. But uh, anyway, I'm so excited to find this one finally for my collection and again in super, super good condition. So I found this one today and uh, yeah, just keep going with the ghosty books and we're going to have to start a new shelf here pretty soon. And last but not least out of the horror spooky book type section of this haul is uh, bind up number two out of the Night World series. So this is by LJ Smith. This is a series I've been wanting to read for quite some time. And I think it was, I don't know, a month ago, maybe only a few weeks ago, that I found bind up number one and number three. So this was the one I was missing and this is the one that they had. So I was so super excited. Today was such a great day at the thrift store. We actually found even stuff outside of books as well. So I was super happy to get this one because um, I do want to read this series in 2024. So now I have them all and I can dive right in. So getting into the non-horror spooky kind of vintage books, uh, these are all part of series that I'm collecting except for this one and I was so excited to find this. Um, it's a series that I'd relatively forgotten about since I was a kid and it's part of a trilogy. So I believe this is book number two in this trilogy. So this is Looking at the Moon by Kit Pearson and uh, it's the first book in the series is called The Sky is Falling and uh, there's one more in the series and I can't remember the name of it honestly. Um, but it's a series, it's a trilogy that I really really loved as a kid and it revolves around these two kids who come from I think England? to stay in Canada during World War II when, you know, during that time parents had to send their kids away and Canada was very much a safe haven for a lot of war-torn families. And this is such a great series, so I was so happy to find this one. Fortunately, they didn't have the other two, but I grabbed this one. And uh, I'm really looking forward to rereading this because I, I all I can remember 
about it was that I loved the series as a kid and it, it's so heart-wrenching because of the whole situation it revolves around. Um, so I'm definitely going to keep a, a lookout for the other two and then uh, might get to throw this one into 2024 as well. And then over the past couple of weeks I found a whole stack of Babysitter's Club books. Now some of these are ones that I already own but I always grab them, especially if number one, they're ones that are higher in the series because I know um, I most likely don't have them. But also for the ones that I already have, a lot of them are not in great condition. They have like creases down the covers or a lot of them have writing in them or they're just kind of dog-eared or whatever. So if I can get them at a good price, which at the thrift store that I go to here, Value Village, usually I can get them for about $1.49. So, um, I grabbed the stack between I think it was last weekend and this weekend and I found uh, quite a few and there's quite a few that's higher up in the series so I was super super excited about that. So first actually we have a babysitter's little sister and I read all of these when I was a kid. I This was kind of like my first chapter book series that I read and I remember being super young you know like five or six and, and being super super excited that I had read a chapter book and this one is number four Karen's Kitty Cat Club. And I don't have a whole lot of the the Babysitter's Little Sister. The regular mainstream Babysitter's Club, I've got a lot of them. But these ones, I don't have a whole lot. So I was super excited to find this. And uh, it was in great condition. And then getting into the regular Babysitter's Club, I'm just going to go through these very quickly because there are quite a few. And the same thing with the Sweet Valley. So I'm going to go through these quickly, but wanted to show you guys uh, which ones I found and that they look absolutely great. So we have number 11, Christy and the Snobs. Number 14, Hello Mallory. This one has a little bit of a crease in the cover, but that's okay. Number 27, Jessie and the Super Brat. Number 29, Mallory and the Mystery Diary. Number 47, Mallory on Strike. Number 48, Jessie's Wish. Number 49, Claudia and the Genius of Elm Street. Number 51, Stacy's Ex-Best Friend. Number 55, Jessie's Gold Medal. Number 59, Mallory Hates Boys and Jim. Number 79, Marianne Breaks the Rules. And one of the white super specials. This is super special number five, California Girls. And I used to love reading these in the summer, so I was super excited to find one of the super specials that I didn't have already in my collection. And again, this is in really good condition. It does have a crease in the back cover, but um, other than that, it looks really, really good. And then today when we were at uh, Value Village, I actually wasn't planning on buying any books. I mean, I know that's stupid to say because every time I go, I know I'm going to buy books. Um, but I was blown away to find all of these Sweet Valley. So I have some of the Sweet Valley Twins and I have some of the Sweet Valley High. Somebody had gotten rid of an entire collection and they were in like almost pristine condition, most of these. Some of them have some creases, but uh, you know, considering how old they are and that they were at the thrift store, these are fantastic and I was so happy. I couldn't leave them behind. And there was actually a lady who was kind of skulking behind me in the children's literature section so I was like just grabbing them off the shelves to make sure I got them all. So uh, super super happy to have these because a lot of my Sweet Valley books are not in the greatest condition. So I'm going to be swapping some of these out but some of them are really high numbers in the series which are a little bit more rare to find and um, ones that I definitely don't have. So I'm going to go through these super, super quickly as well, and you can see for yourself how amazing these look. So starting with the Sweet Valley Twins and Friends, we have number 52, sorry, number 52, Booster Boycott. Look at that. It looks fantastic. Number 56, The Wakefield Strike It Rich. Number 60, Chow Sweet Valley. Number 62, Sarah's Dad and Sophia's Mom. Number 63, Poor Lilia. Number 65, Patty's Last Dance. And this character is reminding me a lot of Jessie from uh, the Babysitter's Club, so I wonder which one came first. I would like to actually look that up. Number 66, The Great Boyfriend Switch. Number 69, Won't Someone Help Anna. Number 70, Psychic Sisters. Number 72, The Love Potion. Number 73, Lilia's music video. 
And then we have Super Chiller number four, The Ghost in the Bell Tower, and Super Chiller number five, The Curse of the Ruby Necklace. So I was so happy to find all of those Sweet Valley Twins, or uh, Sweet Valley Twins and Friends rather, books. And uh, we're gonna jump quickly into the actual Sweet Valley High. I can't wait to get all of the stickers off of these so I can switch out the ones in my collection that need to be replaced. I'm so, so excited that I found these, if you guys can't tell. So let me jump in quickly to these ones because some of these I actually hadn't even heard of before. Number 72, Rockstar's Girl. Number 78, The Dating Game. Number 81, Rosa's Lie. Number 82, Kidnapped by the Cult. Number 83, Stephen's Bride. Number 84, The Stolen Diary. Number 85, Soap Star. Number 88, Love Letters for Sale. Number 89, Elizabeth Betrayed. Number 90, Don't Go Home with John. Number 93, Stepsisters. And here's one that I hadn't actually heard of this spinoff before. So this is uh, Sweet Valley High Superstar, Olivia's Story. So I wonder, is this an offshoot series? I'm gonna have to look more into that, but if, you, if you've read any of these ones, um, let me know down below how many there are and are there ones that are revolving around several characters? I'd really like to know that. And then last but not least, we have one of the super thrillers. This is one that I already own, but I'm so happy that I can replace it with a better copy. And that is Murder on the Line. And uh, yeah, so, so, so super excited to find all of those Sweet Valley books. Tonight I'm going to, we're having um, like slow cooked ribs. I can smell it now. We're watching Krampus and I'm gonna be taking all of the stickers off my books and cleaning them up and uh, getting them ready for my shelves. So that's it for the book haul portion of this video. And now I just wanted to quickly share with you the movies that I've gotten recently. Um, I, like I said before, have started to, I, I own a lot of DVDs as it is, but um, I wanted to rebuy some of the ones that I've already gotten rid of. And uh, Matt and I have been really enjoying watching a lot of vintage movies, both ones that we haven't seen for years and years. And then ones that like both of us haven't seen and ones that, you know, he grew up with a lot of different movies than I did. So we've been kind of sharing experiences and it's been a lot of fun so i was really really happy to find some of these older ones uh, some of these are from the 2000s um, but they're from a fair amount of time ago and some of them are a little bit older so i'm gonna go through these now and we're gonna start first with a show so i did find the first season of melrose place and when i was growing up i was huge into beverly hills 90210 but i did from a like on occasion watch melrose place and I really enjoyed this one. Of course, it was kind of like this competing show, like some people were Team Beverly Hills and some people were Team Melrose Place. So I was super excited to find the first season. And uh, I've got a couple of seasons that I shared a little bit, a little while ago of Beverly Hills. And uh, so I've been working on collecting my kind of vintage TV shows because I've already gotten rid of most of my streaming services and I want to get rid of even more so <laughs> I don't want to keep paying into them um, I'd much rather go out on the hunt and find older shows that I want to watch and you know you buy it once and that's it so. and then for movies so I found this one The Outsiders and I've heard so much about this movie and uh, it has like Matt Dillon, Diane Lane, Tom Cruise, Emilio Estevez, a, a bunch of different people in it. And I've heard so much about this and I've never actually seen it. And um, so when I saw it, I, I asked Matt, I was like, have you ever seen this? And he said, no. So definitely want to put this one on soon. Uh, I know it's super, a super, super popular vintage movie, an older movie from the 80s. And so super excited to have this one and finally experience it because there's so many movies, you know, from the 80s and 90s that just didn't make it in when I was watching them back then. I'm a serial rewatcher, and like I have my collection of movies that I love from that time period, and it's almost like I didn't branch out. So I'm really, really excited to start branching out. And then two from the early 2000s that Matt has hasn't seen either one of these, and I remember I haven't seen these for years, but I remember. Um, 
I really enjoyed them. So one is Identity, and if you've seen this movie, you know it has a wonderful twist. And uh, so it's it's just a really good horror movie, really good kind of slasher thriller. And uh, I haven't seen it for years and years, so excited to watch that one with him. And then the other one is Memento. So I, I watched this a couple of times, years and years ago, like what, 20 years ago when it first came out? And um, I haven't seen it since, so I can't remember a whole lot about it, but I do know that I really enjoyed it. And it's kind of one of those thriller type mysteries that I think Matt would really enjoy. So I went ahead and grabbed that one as well. And then this one was really funny. So when I saw The Spine and I saw Phantom of the Opera, I was like, which is one of my favorite musicals, um, I grabbed it, but then I realized it's not the edition or the version that I was thinking it was going to be. So this is actually a, uh, a, horror t a horror version of Phantom of the Opera, and it stars Robert Englund, who of course plays Freddy Krueger, and I thought that was super cool. I didn't even know this existed. It says, scary, atmospheric, well-paced, delivers the goods. And, uh, you know, I've, of course, started my gothic book club recently. And so uh, I think this is going to have to be a good one where I do a little bit of a marathon of reading the book, which I've never read the book, The Phantom of the Opera, so I want to do that. And then, of course, there's the, what is it, 2004? four-ish version that came out uh, that's the musical and then there's one I believe from the 30s which is the first edition that I watched and then there's this one so it'll be really cool to do a comparison between all of them so I went ahead and grabbed this like I said didn't even know it existed but I'm super super excited that I found it and then two outside of the horror genre but two that both Matthew and I really really love so one is School of Rock um, I, I just think this is a really great movie and it's one of the ones that is like so out of the stratosphere of what I normally watch but it's one of the comedy movies that I actually like I find it really heartwarming it's great to throw on on a Sunday afternoon and I haven't seen it in quite a while so uh, I went ahead and grabbed this one and the other one is Spiderwick so again early 2000s I believe this came out and and uh, it's a really great kids adventure and Matt and I really like watching these movies together we're actually watching the Narnia trilogy right now we're watching a lot of different things <laughs> we've got to start wrapping it up because over the holidays uh, like we don't really celebrate Christmas but one tradition that we have is we always watch the extended edition of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit throughout like the Christmas time and New Year's and uh, so we've got to start wrapping up some of the movies that we're watching so we can start our annual tradition so uh, that's it for all of the movies that I found. I just wanted to share quickly with you guys because, you know, it was just such a great day at the thrift store today. And it was a great week last week too. So I have tons of stuff that I have to put away on the shelves, tons of stickers that I have to remove and try to get all the gunk off there. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a question or comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky everybody. Bye.